Moorio de Pano, what's going on? Welcome back to the practice run, your frontline pass to the heart of sports section, brought to you by 99 Dreams, inspiring others to chase their dreams with your host, Rauri Tukuerangi, and the brother Sam Tirangi. We're diving deep into the thrilling world of the NRL rugby league today, and who knows where the game will take us tomorrow. From the try line to the sideline, we've got you covered. Strap in as we tackle the big plays, the game changing moments, and the stories that define legends. Whether you're a seasoned vet or this is your first hit up, the practice run is for everyone. Every run, every tackle, every win. Experience the rush with us. With exclusive insights, couch analysis, and a touch of humour, the practice run is here to keep you entertained, informed, and part of our practice squad. Because here, every practice run takes us one step closer to glory. And we want to give a huge mihi out to 99 Dreams for powering these episodes. Iara, 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 which means every day. Um, so huge, huge shout out to 99 Dreams. And if you want to support us and support 99 Dreams, head over to 99dreams.co.nz. You can pick yourself up one of these portai, one of these hats. Uh, you can pick yourself up um Maori Mori Mote Hori. Oh, no poraka is the only one that I know of. Jumper. Oh, well, there you uh, go. <laughs> I don't know. There you go. Uh, baseball jersey? <laughs> he doesn't know. I don't know either. <laughs> but the reason I asked that is because we are in Mahuru Māori, which is the uh, Reo Māori month here in Aotearoa. Uh, so just throwing in some a little bit of kupu Māori here and there throughout the episode. Te te pai? Aye. Of course. <laughs> well, look, Fano, we have an exciting episode for you today with round one of the Premiership Gauntlet complete. A few teams have joined Sam and I on the, the bus to Bali. Uh, they might have been a week late, but don't worry, Fano, we've got the bar tab running. <laughs> And there are a few other teams who are sort of trying to rekindle with a bit of a second chance. Uh, so we'll be diving deep into the recap analysis of the weekend's footy. There were some big games on, some impressive victories, and some sort of intriguing ones, to say the least. We've also got our, our team of the week and our power rankings updated for the playoffs scenario but before any of that happens we've got gm mode if they with the Parramatta eels up this week and it was my task to salvage what was left of the scraps that they had been given throughout the weeks so stay tuned for that but before we get into it the brother sam tarangi he is our reigning champ from last thursday's episode of you watch that you would have seen that sam got the dub over to Kuerangi, which would have been a huge huge victory for sam to be honest it's uh always a good time to get a win against two uh, especially when he was on a bit of a streak <clears throat> so mm. it's my turn as a challenger to take on the brother sam we start off every episode with a bit of paper scissors rock paper beats a rock a rock a beats a scissor and a scissor beats a paper one two three shoot winners win and losers loser you ready to go brother Yes, sir. You got us on the count? Yeah, I got the count. All right. Three, two, one, shoot. And up. Oh, high five, mother. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Both of us got a paper. Ooh, ooh, all right. All right. Both of us got a paper. Whoo. Three, two, one, shoot. And up. Ah, you changed. <laughs> Bro, when Sam. I went down, I had paper, and then I was like, nah, we're going scissors. <laughs> nice, brother, nice. Hey, man, you got that two-game win streak now. Two's got the chance for redemption on Thursday, so make sure you tune in for Thursday's episode to see whether or not Sam's reign continues or two bounces back. Uh, but, yeah, let's get into the show. Um I thought we'd ask how the week was, but last week the the questions the questions were a vibe. Uh, since Sam won, Sam, do you want one, two, or three? Um, uh, Let's pick a number. 
<laughs> I don't I don't really I don't really mind, I can't lie. Um <laughs> I thought we were I thought we were gonna spinning wheels and hold on, hold on, hold on. So don't even look at it. Don't look for it. Just, just, just pick it no, up. No, 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 no. Oh, well then. <sighs> Random number. <laughs> Between one and three. Well, it gave me minus three. <laughs> minus three. <laughs> so no. <laughs> that, that, that's not an option. It, it's, it's one, two, or three. We, we don't go in the negatives. Hey, no, I'm just telling you what it gave me. Um, random number between one and three. Ah, oh, gave me two. Two. Would you rather take your dream career that paid minimum wage, or would you rather work a job that you couldn't stay at work in it? Like, for example, think of maybe like a garbage man or like a McDonald's worker. Not that they're terrible jobs in the fire. <laughs> they're just the first ones I can think of. Okay? <laughs> if that is your mahi kapa, you're doing a great job. You, you, you're doing a service for the people around the world. All right. Without you, the world will be a shit place. So those are just examples. I don't know. Kapa cleaner, a bricklayer. Um, yeah. So would you rather work the dream career that pays minimal wage new zealand dollar um or would you work a job that you can't stay working but you have to do 12 hour shifts with eight hour breaks between shifts working five on two off earning 350k per annum uh after tax uh, I, I think it would have to be a job that i like you know like a job that i love something that i love doing just because I don't buy a lot of shit anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, like, making minimal doesn't mean, doesn't, like, do a whole lot for me. Oh, it doesn't matter a whole heap to me. And then, basically, I get to do, basically, it's just, if I get to keep doing something around basketball, I'm good. I'm good. See. Me, me without basketball, I get pretty whole high, I can't lie. So. <laughs> <laughs> Like honestly, me, me in the me in the basketball off season, uh, not a not a happy camper. Not a happy See, would that, camper. Would that be the the miserable career? Um, you working as a janitor, cleaning up at basketball stadiums, but never being able to see the game, but always have to clean up the mess. I'm throwing hands. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing hands, and hey, anyone who wants to say I can't watch the game, ah, uh, come here. <laughs> hey, hey. Nice. Yes. Well, thank you for answering that, brother. Thank you for answering that. What's the next random number for two? <laughs> <laughs> Where does I man? I'm trying three. to. Three. Three is the next one. <laughs> I was like, no way, this man just did that. No way. Oh, Wait, no one else got us a sound effect. Oh, we, we need some sound effects. Oh. Oh. Uh, do, do, you want, do you want me to read this question out for two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You read it for two. All right. So you got question three, two. That question oh, is. Just spun me. Uh, oh my! Hey, it spun the wheel too, brother. Oh, you're not here. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, are you ready? Are you ready? Oh shit! Go go. All right, yeah. Question three: If you had the chance to be the human delegate to negotiate with the aliens, what would you say? To negotiate with the aliens, jeez. <laughs> Uh, my that's such a with random them. question. Yeah, it's random ass. Space jam it up. Go <laughs> <laughs> shit. What Run am I doing? I'll probably be like, "What you got, man? What you got?" <laughs> I'll trade you all these white people, and we take some of your people away. <laughs> Deal. Gina. <laughs> uh, what if our listeners be white? <laughs> I'm lacking melanin. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, actually. <laughs> Not a whole heap of going on over here. Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. What were yeah. we We're getting mistaken, to... Sam. We, we're going up. <laughs> oh, brother, like... Not until they check our ID at the door. Hey, hey is the ID, <laughs> man? Look. 
Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Now, I'll probably try to be political. Surely we got resources they can use and we can still, so or not still, you know, exchanging resources. I can, who knows? We might end up with like a spaceship. Surely they can like hook it up with a spaceship or two. You know what I'm saying? You know, and we can hook them up with. Uh, yeah, what do we got? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. What do they need? They might need something we have, you know. Although, what do we have? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Gee, be much. We got like. <laughs> we got them some boiler. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got teeth. Teeth. We send them to Turkey. Get their teeth done. Yeah. Air transplants. Yes, fuck, it'll be sign K. It'll be like, surely you don't want to be looking like that, bruh. Come on. <laughs> we, can, we can work something out here, you know. What I you mean, know. like? <laughs> That's so. That would probably be it, eh? Just try to get some resources. I'll try to get, get us a spaceship, surely. Preferably the one that's got, like, the missiles, you know? I'm just assuming that it's decked out with all the top gear. Then we can we just, we, um, what do they call it? When you, like, take it apart and then put it back? Can um, I have a follow-up question to this? Reverse like engineer it. Reverse engineer oh, yeah. it. Oh, I just thought we were going to customize it. Gee, sack it out. Sack it. Some tints <laughs> on it. <laughs> Some rims on there, G. A <sighs> couple of subs just... <clears throat> yeah, we'll does does, does New Zealand have the spaceship? Oh, look, I don't know, mate. We ain't got that far, okay? I, I feel like there's a war. I feel like there's a war over who gets to have it. <laughs> Yeah. Whoever owns the whoever gets the ship from the aliens is gonna own it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> clearly. Until America they have says the power. Bring it on over here. Fuck. Bring Jeez. it on over we here. Could say, we could sell like um ad space on the ship. Ooh. Like when it flies over, people are like, oh, little KFC promo. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, like four weeks or five ninety nine, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that'd be me. Get some sort of resource from them. Resources for resources, surely. Hey, I'd I be just like, feel like we ain't got resources. Surely, if we don't, hey, do you know what we do? Rock off. <laughs> oh, no, no. You know what we've got? We've got water. We've got water. We've got, we got to rock got. off. Hey, just be like, hey. Play for it. Fuck. We we got it. We got it. Paper beats. Scissor, scissor beat. <laughs> we got it. <laughs> One off game, Fano. We got it. <laughs> but all three of us get a turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm going to have to beat everyone, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad. Well, I guess, uh, two, you asked me the final question. Yes, so your question of the week, Rawari, is if you could make up a rule that the rest of the world had to follow forever and ever, what would it be? Bro, just for like simplicity of for my life, I just want one, like just one standard that is like the the universal standard for monetary value. I don't want my New Zealand dollar converting to USD and paying like seven hundred dollars more just for a fifty dollar item with my New Zealand dollar. I want to pay my one New Zealand dollar equal one US dollar. I'm sick of these outlandish freaking conversion rates. <laughs> it's it's a thirteen dollar product for for Americans. For us, that's seventy bucks. That's that's not that's so far apart, man. See, that would be I my see. rule. Or um and they're they're lame ass, but it just makes my life a little bit easier. Or it's um making everyone in the world use metric instead of the Americans <laughs> using Imperial and us using metric like who says it's seventy two outside? No one. American. It's either 15 or it's 23. <laughs> oh, it is not 72. Hard, eh? Yeah, 72 <laughs> is this close to boiling my water. That is not the same. That <laughs> is not the same, Farno. Uh, I want meters to be the, you know, the regular. Uh, like when someone's like, oh, how many miles do you get out of it? I don't know. <laughs> I get like a couple hundred kilometers. I don't know how many miles that be. <laughs> 
And I'm like, oh, you know. So you just, just things that simplify my, my day-to-day living. I'm with you on that one, man. Yeah. These Americans, or some, you know, being an advanced people are going to be fucking always <laughs> fucking lacking in some other areas. <laughs> and now, US listeners that will be listening to this, that you always do, and we appreciate you. But, Fatno, tell me you wouldn't be more, like, happier with water that freezes at zero and below and boils at 100 and above. And say, so I don't even know what your water boils at, but zero is what it needs to freeze at and 100 is what it needs to boil at. Everything in between, y'all are confused. What is it? Is it 32 freezing point over there? Oh, Brother, I goodness. do not know. Yeah, I think it's 32, oh, right? I know I zero know. be freezing. <laughs> <laughs> zero is definitely freezing. <laughs> Anything below zero is ridiculous. I think we got like a negative 10 once down south and it snowed. It was ungodly. <laughs> so that, that that's what I would have in place. And, I, you know, I feel like the rest of the world will get behind these, these rule changes. <laughs> Either one straight up dollar or metric worldwide. Uh, to our US listeners, please comment down below. Let us know why the hell you like Imperial. Because, mother, uh, I don't know. Because it's the opposite of British, right? <laughs> that is true. That is, that's one thing y'all should have kept. Cups of tea and metric. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, have you had American coffee? Brother, I've seen the way they make it. <laughs> it looks horrible. I don't even <laughs> like coffee, but that looks horrible. I've seen the way they I've seen, make it. <laughs> what is it? Men in black. And they just pour that shit. It looks horrible, man. And that like <laughs> dusty old lady behind the diner. What do you want, darling? <laughs> Fucking not anything <laughs> from here. That's how they be, man. And them diners on Route 66 or some shit. It'd be a thing, man. I haven't even been to America. I just watch a lot of film. Oh, yeah. um, but you American listeners, if we ever get over there, man. Give us a cool itinerary and, um, you know, we'll, we'll bring the practice run to the world. Anyway, moving along. Um, my GM mode returns for its, what week is this? 13. Don't quote me on that. Um, it is, it might be, it might not be. It is my turn <clears throat> to unveil the new Parramatta Eels. So just remember that they have no longer got Jermaine Hopgood. Uh, they don't have <laughs> Mitch Moses. Uh, they don't have Brown. Who else got gapped? All of them. They don't Heaps have Junior Paulo. They don't have Regal. No Paulo. There Campbell you go. Gillard. Campbell Gillard's gone. Well, he's gone anyway in real life too. Yeah. Um, rip. <clears throat> but you know what they do have? Hope, belief, <laughs> and a coach that can will this team to victory. Because in all honesty, in real life, there, there's something going on in that locker room <clears throat> that's just not gelling right with this team. So what better way to sort of fleece that out than get rid of the team, blow it up, and let's try something new. So that's what we did. So we do have incoming players. We've got Zach Lomax and um, Isaiah... Iongi. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly, my old. But um, yeah, shit. I just said. <laughs> I'll be honest, every time I've heard his name pronounced, that's how they say it too. So. <laughs> Iongi? Yeah. Sweet ass. Well, all right. Um, I don't think I traded him, but he's not in my 18. Who's Anyone that? got any trades for um, Gutho? <laughs> Send them to the Sharks. Team. They need another fullback. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I'll find a place for him. Let me go through some of the moves that were made. So, Kafusi and O'Sullivan were sent to the Eels in the Brown deal. Well, Kafusi and O'Sullivan, along with Madison, got bundled up and sent to Manly. O'Sullivan will be the sort of um, apprentice to DCE as DCE prepares for retirement. Uh, Kafusi and Madison offer a bit more depth 
to that manly squad. And we get Olokowatu. Parramatta fans rejoice. <laughs> but not for too long. Olokowatu goes to Melbourne. <laughs> In return, we get Jack Howarth. A great centre. Pa- uh, Parramatta fans rejoice. But again, not for too long. Um, then Jack Howarth. He gets sent to the Roosters, and the Roosters send over Chad Townsend. Yay! (laughs) Chad Townsend will be our starting six. Now, you're probably wondering, don't you have Ezra Mann starting at six? Yeah, we do. But not for long. Ezra Mann, pack your bags, brother. I've brought you a house in Manurewa real hard, G. You're off to the Warriors. And uh, we welcome over Connor Watson. Don't worry, he's not going anywhere. Welcome to the Eels. Um, we've made another signing. He's signed from Kansas City Chiefs in the NFL. We've got Luis Rees Samet, who... There's speculation they're just going to throw him on IR all year and he's just going to sort of learn the code and try and crack the team next year. Um, So we've just placed a hypothetical in this hypothetical world that we're building. He wants out, doesn't want to go back to Union, so he'll play centre for the uh, Parramatta Eels. We've also gone with my theme. We go all in on the rugby themes. I've got 20-year-old Sam Pendergrass uh, signed from Rugby Union. He's touted as like this next big Irish superstar. He's got, you know, UK football, so like soccer feet. Like he can just kick that ball, tap that ball. Man, he's got good control of the ball with his feet. So we need a seven. So we're going to throw a young 20-year-old Sam Pendergrass into this rebuild. This team's not meant to compete. This is meant to sort of build a foundation for the future using a lot of young talent. That was the idea there. And last but not least, we've signed another rugby union player, just because why not? We're going all in on these rugby boys. We've got David Havili (coughs) signed from Tasman. Welcome, brother. No my. So our current team looks like this. At fullback, we've got Isaiah Iongi. On the wings, we've got Zach Lomax and Jojo Fafita in that um, Jermaine Hopgood tree. <clears throat> in the centres, we've got Louise Rees Zamet and David Havili. Our halves are Chad Townsend and Sam Pendergrass. Our props are Isaac Fa'asua Maliawi and Sean Lane. Bro, that's the best I've pronounced his name all season. <laughs> it has been 10 year 10 or from day dot. And uh, Isaac, well done, brother. Our hooker is Brendan Hands. Our second row is Khalees Haas, Bryce Cartwright, and our 13 is Connor Watson. On the bench, we've got Dylan Walker, Widow McGree, Charlie Geimer, Fletcher Baker, and um, Clint Gutherson. <laughs> so, not a team... That's going to make an impact straight away, but with what I had left, it's, um, I think I've managed to do quite well, actually, considering I got everyone's off cuts. I got everyone's off cuts. Don't laugh like you didn't send bullshit to the, to the eels, Sam. What do you mean? We all did. What did I I send to the eels? You sent bad contracts. I sent great contracts. That was bad contract. Hey, what you know you it. Mean? We all know it. What's, Jan- um, What's wrong with Jen Sullivan's contract? He didn't even make my team. He shouldn't. He ain't even in the 18. Guess what? He shouldn't be in anyone's 18. Exactly. Shouldn't be in anyone's top 30. Exactly. So you can't laugh at this team, man. You all know that uh, it has been given shit. So <clears throat> that was the rebuild. Um, I think it's manageable. They'll probably pick up a couple of wins on the year. They've got pieces to build around and a future that they can deliver upon. Um, the main thing with the Olakwatu trade was I built the Roosters and I wanted hell with at the Roosters. 
So I found a way to make it happen. <laughs> I had Olokuatu at the Eels. He was, it was got to stay there. But um, look, the Roosters job come up and I, I just had to make some things happen over there in Sydney. So yeah, Para weren't doing anything. Someone's got to be at the bottom of the barrel. What are your guys' thoughts on this team? I think you did the best of what you had, man. Wasn't much exactly. to work with. It was going to be a tough rebuild either way. Exactly. We had we had everyone's scraps, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, nah, man, kudos to you. Got quite creative in the way you did some of those moves, so you had to get the team what you wanted to. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. Yo, I thought Townsend could mentor Sam Pendergrass a bit in the NRL. Um, and then by the time his, what, two year? Is he on a one year or two year contract? He's on one, right? Townsend. Yeah, I think so. One. Yeah, one year, I think, yeah. Yeah, well then, once he's off contract, it frees up some space to bring in a new six. There might be some new sixes off contract next year that they can pair with Pendergrass after a year being in the league. Um, but when you've got a guy like Zach Lomax on the wing, he'll give 110% effort. They've got a new coach coming in. So it's only right that you sort of clear the roster and let him have something new. Oh, this the longy dude. He's the one that's coming from Penrith. Panthers. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yes, yes, interesting. Big reps on him, eh? And in real life, I don't know where that leaves Gutho. They're saying either hooker or a centre. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've heard it thrown up in so many different positions for him. I to be mean, honest, I think he'd be good at 14. Like him coming in for a little spirit here and there and just get some offense going. He could play that, like, guess him playing that hooker role. Yeah, because well, I heard, what was it, Riles wanted him to play 9 or potentially 13. I just don't think he's built big enough to be tackling that many tackles mm. per game. That's why that's why it kind of confused me when they talked about him moving to the centers. Was that, yeah. That, that edge might get torched. <laughs> yeah, sure it's gonna be interesting. I don't I don't know what they'll do with him. And clearly, you can tell I didn't know what they were gonna do with him. He didn't get put in the eighteen. Fletcher Baker got put in over him, and everyone knows how I feel about him. <laughs> we'll see where we're at, man. Gone. <laughs> Gone. <laughs> he's in the he's in the depth chart. He's playing uh, he's playing uh what do you call it? Reserve grade. Fair enough. Well that's what we got fine <laughs> That's what we got. How about, made it work with what we had. On the wing? I'm pretty sure that's what he signed for. He signed a big deal there on the wing to be on a wing then. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see anyone putting him at centre when he's had like a friggin' season and a half at wing. I'm almost, I'm almost certain that's why he signed him so he could play centre. Ah, mate, he's an out and out winger now. Yeah. If he doesn't like it, then he can say bye to Origin and bye to the Kangaroos. Because he ain't Facts. Get centre there. I think he could play centre and then fuck come those teams he is playing on the wing. I feel like in those teams he's not going to care. At Parra, he nah, might be like, who is my centre? <laughs> why you want to play him at centre then just have him for one-offs on the wing? You want him there all year round. Have wing fitness. Oh, I mean, like, if like if you're if you're the origin, you're the Aussie coach. Yeah, you do want him there. I am at the club. Yeah, well, I think that's there. what they're going to do now with yeah, um, yeah. his connection with Mitch Moses. He's going to say, "Get me out of here!" <laughs> oh yeah, that's the team. That's that list. Next week we've got. Is it two in the storm? Mm-hmm. So it's definitely two and somebody. Two in the storm. Yeah. 
So we've already heard one of their moves. Did you put him in? I can't even remember now. <laughs> I'm looking at this list. It didn't look like it. But you got rid of your centre, but you didn't put him in. What was the oh, trade wait. Again? Radley got traded there. Oh, so maybe Olokwatu is still at the... No, Olokwatu oh, then Olokwatu, is... I think that might have come off of the... That Penrith explosion. Then the Radley for the other traders is legit. But I get Radley. I did say. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, then I traded him down bottom. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so then where did Olokowatu end up? These are the knights, no? That would probably make more sense. Did I have Olokowatu? For like a second. For and then like never had him. Nah, he yeah, I'm reset. pretty sure I'm pretty sure he didn't. Because I'm pretty sure Olakawatu went to the Knights and then Radley went to two. Yeah, he is at the Knights. Yeah. Yeah, no, he is. So what the frick? Where did Olakawatu go <laughs> then? Because where did Howarth come from? Howarth was part roosters. of the Radley trade, was Oh, no, well, that's how... Nah, because Radley, I sent him to. You sent him to the store. The Knights. Um, yeah, I sent him to the Knights for Cam Murray. Like the Radley. Yeah. How did he end up on my team? Nah, he's who I traded for Howarth. Yeah, that's right. I'm just yeah. trying to figure out who I traded <coughs> to the Knights to get Howarth to the Roosters. Sounds like a you problem. <laughs> Sounds like we might have to call to question some of these deals. <laughs> they all happened within my team. So don't you worry about that. They're all done. I don't know. They're all legit. Questionable. Anyway. <laughs> so tune in next week as two uh, gives you a Melbourne Storm rebuild. That oh, should be a good right. one. That amazing trade happened. <laughs> um, yeah, because we all did it all in one night, too. Yeah, see, I don't know why Sam laughs at what I did with the Eels, where he threw out rubbish to all the other teams. Hey, what do you mean? I, I sent out yet-to-be-discovered talent. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. No, you didn't. Charlie Staines just hasn't played in the right system yet. No. Brett Naden. Anyway. Brett Naden going back to where he played his best footy. Keep telling yourself you that. Anyway. We'll get into that. Being good, just not for That's us. That's why no one makes trades with you in fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, because they want too That's much. Why everyone return. just laughs at your laughs at your trades. Nah, but see here's here's the thing though. Because they start it with me and then I get petty about it. So yeah, I am gonna <laughs> send you some bullshit back. <laughs> I am going to send you some GG Jackson for Nikola Jokic type stuff. <laughs> well, before we go down a rabbit hole, let's dive into Friday the 13th, an unlucky day for some, and I'll tell you what, it was an unlucky day for the Sydney Roosters. So, give us a breakdown, brother. Yes, what a way to kick off the uh, gauntlet. Is that what we're calling it? Yeah, man, it's a premiership gauntlet. The premiership gauntlet Friday night, Friday the 13th at Blue Bet Stadium. The last game, might I add, of the stadium before it gets uh, knocked over and they start the rebuild or they move to the new stadium. Not too sure about that. All I know is that that stadium is now done and dusted and the Penrith Panthers send the stadium out with a convincing victory, 32-10, to 10, over the Roosters. Main talking points for this one is, well, the first one that comes to mind is Cleary. He just gives the rugby league world a reminder of just how great 
he really is. To me, he was easily the best player on the field. And honestly, I'd say he was the best player for the whole round. Uh, to have as many weeks as he is off and then come back and to put on that type of show, it was just it was just a clinic. That first, that first 30 minutes, that first 20 minutes, man. I mean, Panthers just put it on and to all set, uh, started off with a try. That was quickly followed up with one to Isaac Tango, which was followed up by one by Jerome Luai, which they got followed up by Luke Garner. And after just 22 minutes, Fano, the score was already like, what was it, 24-0? Oh, 22-0. And then Cleary got a penalty at half time, 24-zip. I was already making the call. Am I going to bed? This game looks pretty over to me. Mm. I was ready to just shut it down. And it wasn't that Roosters... Well, I mean, really, Roosters just got dominated. I felt in times in that first half, they just didn't touch the ball. It felt like in the first 10 minutes, they might have had one set. It was just all Panthers, and they were rolling, and it was just a reminder of just how clinical they are and how dominant they are. Now, if you watched the previous show, you would have heard me talk about the Roosters' record against top four teams, in particular against uh, the Panthers, who they had, hadn't beat, I think, since 2020 or maybe 2019. So there was that hoodoo on them going into this game, also being without Walker, uh, Radley, and Smith. It was always going to be a big ask, and 24-0 at halftime looked like game, set, match. But they came out in their second half, and I don't know what Robbo said, but they turned it on. Quick early try to Suali, or Suali'i. That was followed up by James Tedesco's try. And all of a sudden, it's 10 to 24. And only like, what, a couple of minutes have gone by. They still had more than 30 minutes to play in the second half. The eye emoji was sent in the chat. Could it be? Could it be? Well, obviously, the big moment that this game has been talked about and was really the key turning point in this one that halted any Roosters uh, charge that they had was the not forward pass, forward pass. They got called. I mean, I think it was Tedesco who made a little break, passed it to Tupo, who made an even bigger break. They went back to, I believe, uh, Tedesco. And he did the last pass to Suali'i, who went away, scored the try, but the Tupo pass was called forward. Which, I don't know, man, it's 50-50 on this one. Like, from the angle that they're showing, from all available angles, it looked like it was back out of his hand. Now, the one thing I will say about Ashley Klein is he was in line. But the angle he had is where Tupo's, I think he saw Tupo's back. So from his angle, just because the ball, like the ball did kind of travel forward, well, not travel forward, it definitely traveled like straight, maybe marginally forward. So potentially from his angle that he had, he couldn't see that the ball out of the hand had traveled back. So he made the call, and from then on out, it was just, you could see it took the sail out of their wins. You know, because if they score that try, that goes through, he didn't score it under the post, but there would have been, you know, it wasn't on the sideline. There would have been a gettable kick. You're more than likely looking at the score being 24-16 with still more than 20 minutes left to go. It's anyone's game at that point. But from then on now, Panthers were just clinical. It wasn't that they overwrought them with their skill. They just grinded them out, got back into the army. So to be honest, Roosters really never had another shot after that. That was pretty much it. Luke Garner scores a late try in the 70th minute to add the cherry on top. But yeah, I mean, that first 40 minutes was just pure dominance for me. And then the Roosters managed to get momentum in that first 10, but that moment, that forward pass, it just ended the game, ended it for them. Luckily, the Roosters do have another life. They'll be back. Uh, but Panthers, man, they go through. And the four Pete, I mean, it's on. Right, it's on. All they have to do now is win two games. You got a, a fresh Cleary, who's only played like what feels like ten games this whole year. We do have concerns, Dylan Edwards. You know, he doesn't look as fit. Looks like he's carrying a niggle, and that's kind of always going to be the question mark on this team is whether they can make it healthy. 
But you do have key players leaving, obviously Lua is leaving, Taruva's going, James Fisher Harris is going. They'll want to send these guys out on, you know, with another premiership to go for four, to know that it's on, and you only have to win two more games, or at most two more games. You're going to give it your all. I thought the Penrith were good. Cleary was absolutely dominant. They're good without him, but man, he just reminds you of just, I don't know, just, I want to say unbeatable, but you almost have to be perfect to beat them. If he's in that sort of style, if he's if he plays like that, it's going to be hard for another team to beat them, man. They don't make many errors. They don't really give you chances to like capitalize on their mistakes. And they're ruthless when you give them a chance. You got Cleary who can kick you into submission. You got that forward pack that's just, you know, always on the go. That back three that gives them good yardage. I mean, uh, it's that was to me like a message sent. I wouldn't say to like the other teams, but I bet you the Storm were watching that game. And I bet you Penrith wanted to send a personal message to the Storm to say like, hey, because at the, at the moment it looks like the gauntlet's leading to those teams. Mr. Sent early, Mr. Sent clear. It's really all I've got, I've got for this game, man. Dominant victory by Panthers, but it will be a game that will be marred over the forward pass, non-forward pass call that pretty much changed the outcome of the game. Uh, yeah, that's all I got, really. Nice. Hey, it's a tough, tough loss. Tough loss. Uh, another tough loss. <laughs> Saturday uh, over at Amy Park in Melbourne. Storm versus Sharks. What do you got, Sam? Yeah, 37 to 10 was the final score. Um, man, the first half, there was just so many Sharks errors. Like, they kind of gave Melbourne most of the control. The very first one, <laughs> the kickoff. Will get. Will Kennedy tries to catch the ball, goes over the top of his head, and it goes uh it goes dead and goal from there. Melbourne, like Melbourne just start immediately on their line, right? And then I think it's the third or fourth tackle, maybe. Munster's in a dummy half. Shows the ball to Nelson, which I can't blame. I can't blame Toby Ru- uh Toby Rudolph pinching in on him. Like that's Nelson a meter from the try line on the first set. He digs in, money shows him the uh the dummy and goes over and scores so you know it's like the dream it's the dream start for uh for the storm and an absolute horror for the sharks sharks on their first set like it just kind of shows you like the mood kind of like melbourne was in i think sharks made 30 35 meters on their first set they put up a bomb it goes into no man's land melbourne let the ball bounce the ball finds its way to uh mckinnis who offloads it to rudolph Rudolph breaks two tackles. They have a four-on-two overlap. And Rudolph doesn't make the pass. If he if he makes that pass to his right, they they definitely score in the corner. Um but yeah, he doesn't he doesn't make the pass. He keeps running. He tries to grab it, but Hughes makes a tackle from the inside. And uh, it ends up being a knock on. And then just another error from the Sharks, man. The very next play. Uh, I think it's McKinnis. No, Brayley. Sorry, Brayley jumps up out of the line. He's offside. Melbourne get out of their end. Mel- like, the score should be tied at this point, but, you know, just another Sharks error kind of gets them out of the way. Um, so, yeah, on the third on the third set from the Sharks, the, uh, the Storm knock it on in the end goal. There's a play of the ball. Oh, sorry, they knock it on in the field of play. There's a play of the ball. Will Kennedy's there at dummy half. He's not paying attention. He's not paying attention. The ball gets played. He picks it. He picks it up and gets tackled immediately. Uh, from there, uh, the next play though, they got pretty lucky. Like Nelson came up out of the line, tried to put a big hit on, ended up hitting someone in the head. Uh, in the eleventh minute, uh, in the eleventh minute, the Sharks. Oh, I think it might have been twelfth minute actually. Sorry, the Sharks score. Uh, they they kind of there was like a big hit up there from Argo Kafusi who then got an offload. From there they managed to spread the ball to the Sharks' right side attack. Talakai gets a one on one with Howith. He kind of gets over the top of him, but they still make the tackle. Howith, however, holds on and they get a set restart. 
they go to the middle and then two three tackles later you know they bring it back to the side so- uh to the right side you're laughing at man um how bro honestly how was defensive position in that it was horrible it kind of left them to a point where the only option he had was to go for the intercept. Um, but yeah, from there, Coates and Munster covered because Howarth came up with air. But they couldn't wrap up the ball. He gets the offload out to Kato in the, in the corner who scores. Uh, then it kind of just goes like a little bit chalk from there. There, Honestly, just so many errors from the, from the Sharks in the first half. Uh... Where do we have it? <laughs> I read too much. <laughs> I read too much here. I can't, can't read it all. Um, sorry, team. I'm pulling up the game. Rodeo. <laughs> In the t- no, 24th man. minute. Bro. <laughs> I'm like trying you to read it. I'm like, oh, this is so much. <laughs> you know what would solve this issue, G? What's that? If you just say his name. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> no. No, sorry, continue. Bro. <laughs> in the in the twenty fourth minute, or uh, Will Will Warwick uh, gets over in the corner. They do a really nice job of just basically they, they they take it down the left side of the field, um, and then they set up some massive sweep to the right. Hughes does a really nice job here of he hits Cartor early, uh, uh, Ali Cartor rather than giving it to him at the line where when he gives it to him early because Trindle's on him, it attracts it all in a bit. So then when he when he makes the pass and he gets the ball out to Meany on the edge, or like on the outside of him, it brings Molitalo in. So now he gets the flick pass out to Warbrick, who yeah, gets over in the corner. I don't really think that was a forward pass, but I I heard a lot of people saying it was. I don't really think it was, but I'm also was cheering for Melbourne. Uh, and like just before half time, Melbourne give away a penalty. All right, they should be going into this half. I think it's fourteen. Is it fourteen? Yeah, they should be going into into the half fourteen six. Melbourne give away a penalty, allowing like the Sharks to go down, get a kick down, get into their territory. Oh, that's right, brother. <laughs> Nicol- oh, sorry, <laughs> Nicola gets over the score, but it's it's the pass from Trindle. The ball, the ball goes out to Trindle. Sean Bloor shoots out of the line to try to take, to try to try tackle Trindle, but Trindle just steps off his right foot. He draws in three and just flicks the ball out the back to uh, to Nikita, who goes under the post. And the in like in the halftime sports fourteen ten. I didn't really feel like it was that close of a game, so I felt like the Sharks were definitely like pumped going into halftime. But man, come that second half, Harry Grant, ladies and gentlemen. Hat trick in the second half. He didn't have to do a whole lot for for any of those tries in particular, but I, he was just around the ball. Uh, in the fifty first minute, Harry Grant gets over. He hits Josh King on a short ball. They tackle him, but they can't wrap up the ball. He gets the ball out of the back. Harry Grant goes straight over under the posts. Um, in the sixty second minute, Warbrick gets over in the corner. Really, that's more so just a a good kick from Jerome Hughes, if anything. <laughs> There wasn't a whole lot going on in that set, I don't th- think. No. What led to this try was the Sharks, but the Sharks had all the position. Then they went they went down the short side at halfway. Leoto comes up out of the line to take Trindle, so he can't he can't get the kick away. He passes it to Edo. Edo doesn't kick it. He tries to run it. They flick it inside. Uh, it goes a few more passes to Hines, where Munster and Josh King just rush him. They rush him, don't let him get the ball away. He gets tackled on, on the Sharks 45, and yeah, I think it's like th- four plays later? Four plays later, they come up with that. Uh, Hughes gets that kick to the corner for Warbrick, and yeah, he goes over and scores a second. Uh, and then the 71st and 77th minute, Harry Grant scores two tries. Basically carbon copies. Carbon copies of each other. In the 71st minute, they, they kind of just march down the field. Hughes puts up a bomb. Kartor gets over. Uh, Kartor gets the he out jumps. Well, he doesn't even out jump. Molitalo just jumps super early. Kartor doesn't leave the ground and he gets the kick. Makes that pass on the inside. Harry Grant's following it up. Gets over and scores. In the 77th minute, same thing, really. They 
march down the field. They bomb into the corner. Warbrick this time, though, he taps it infield. The luckiest bounce. And Harry Grant ends up with his third. Rub, to rub the, salt in the, uh, to rub the salt in the wound a little bit, Harry Grant kicks a, kicks a field goal to, to make the uh, score 37-10 to 10 with 30 seconds left to go. And that's kind of where the game plan uh, the game played out. It was just... It, it was really impressive by the Storm because I thought after that easy start, they could have really kind of like looked to chance their arm. But they didn't. They just stayed. They just keep building their pressure, keep building their pressure. And then it really showed in the back half because I felt like the Sharks were pretty gassed. Like they just didn't have a lot. That first half was a pretty, pretty big shocker from Toby Rudolph and Will Kennedy in particular. But, you know, it wasn't just them alone. Uh, you guys got anything to say on this game? That was one hell of a reply to the Penrith game, man. They, they clearly showed us who the top two teams are in this comp. And, yeah. I, I credit that uh, hat trick man, that Harry Grant hat trick. It's because he believed in Joe Henry. <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> hey, I'm just saying, though. <laughs> But the next two games, you know how Melbourne really gets up for um, like milestone games. It's I know the final is I think it's the final is meant to be Hughes's one hundred and fiftieth, and the the one before that was that the prelim, whatever. Mm. The ones, semi. Yeah, the semi is Harry Grant's one hundredth. So. Those are two milestone games, and they get up for it. I'm just saying, it looks, looks pretty good for them. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel as though they'll definitely smoke whoever they play in their prelim. It's going to yeah. be their final. Those first two games, those those two vict- victorious teams were just head and shoulders above yeah. their opposition. They've been head and like shoulders it. above everyone for the whole year. Yeah. yeah. And, and then... It's showing. Getting into these final two games, you, you know, we'll talk about the difference. But yeah, the like last year, the two best teams were in the grand final from last season, and it looks like it's going to be the same this year. Yeah. Why are you shaking your bro? You just hate the Broncos, eh? You can't admit that they were the second best team last season. Uh, I think they were. Bro, your team hasn't been for the past 10 years. Uh, our team, my team was definitely better. Anyway, moving along, <laughs> we've got the finals. The game, why was it so late again? This was like at fucking midnight, this game was. Yeah, the AFL. Bruh, no one cares about the AFL here in Aotearoa. I so, they uh, definitely just put do. These, <laughs> they put these games back on at a regular time, man. Uh, we've got the Cowboys hosted the Knights and continued that home game winning streak that they currently have against Newcastle. I don't what is it, what is it since like twenty fifteen or something like that, eh? That the Knights haven't been able to win against the Cowboys up in Townsville. Yeah, it was something ridiculous. Yeah, it's something outrageous. Uh Kyle Felt, we spoke about it on the last um episode Thursday. If you're looking for a first try score, it's either Kyle Felt or it was um, Fletcher Sharp both getting a try, but it is Kyle Felt who opened up the game with his first try off the... Uh, that one come off the intercept, eh? Yeah. He had two intercepts down that edge. The first time he got caught, the second one, he pinned the ears back, turned back the clock a bit. It's probably the slowest breakaway I've ever seen in my life from a winner. <laughs> <laughs> it was dusty, man. But, hey, Koro got it done. You know, he, he made it... You know, I know he felt it the next day. I know for a fact he felt it the next day, man. Because, you know, some days at our age, we'd be getting up and feeling it the next day. I know he felt that for sure. <laughs> um, but, yeah, what a phenomenal way to open things up. And didn't Val miss that kick? That was that, that was the kick that yeah. he broke his streak. Eh? He was on record to um, equal JT. And then, yeah, he just he just whiffed it. It just, yeah, wasn't wasn't meant to be that one unfortunately, but uh, didn't set the precedent for the night. Uh, now the Knights, they reply with two tries, um, both of which were converted and sort of at half time put the Knights in the driver's seat. Caelan Ponga was firing on all cylinders, doing his utmost 
to get this night side over the line. Uh, you really see the difference, eh, when KP's firing, when he's attacking the line, like, he is phenomenal. He is something else. He definitely is worth all the money they pay him. They just need to find ways to utilise what's left of their salary cap to support him. Because currently they've got great players just in differing positions. I also think it was a sort of a night to forget for... um. Dang, I didn't think he had the best performance out there that night. Uh, a couple of errors in there and you know, a few missed tackles. But in saying that, in the first half, that Queensland defence was pretty average, uh, to say the least. So whatever it was at halftime, they just got to tune up. And they came out firing that second half again. Um, first to score uh, through Muzza. Taolangi uh, out there on the edge and then yeah it kind of just kept rolling from there on out for them uh, with McLean scoring another try to get the Cowboys up then Lucas tries to even the game up and at, at that point it looked like oh shit anyone can get this now and then yeah 72nd minute Cotter scores the try and that was a great try too I thought that was a, yeah definitely that snatched any momentum that Newcastle had and just, yeah, sucked the life out of them. They looked like they struggled to get some attack going late in that second half. And, you know, if you don't have the stamina and if you don't have momentum in a dogfight, nine times out of ten, you ain't going to win. And that that's what this game was. It was a dogfight. I'm not saying this was a horrible game at all. Like, these two teams left everything they had on the field. And unfortunately for the Knights, everything they had just wasn't enough to beat the Cowboys. And the Cowboys came away with the win. Um, that's just hard luck. That's the end of the season. It definitely didn't help with Leo Thompson just uh, mm-hmm. up to, cousin. Up to. There's a bit of a brain fade. Do we, we find out later this afternoon, eh? whether or not he's um no, going to be suspended and he'll be out charged. for Kiwis. He is? He has been charged. Well, but there we go. I don't, I don't know what they're saying, the charges, because all I've seen is that he's missing round one next year. So could he potentially miss Kiwis and play round one? Well, that, that's the thing, because I couldn't find how long he's actually been suspended for. It just says he's out for round one, so oh. I don't know if that's including, if they're factoring the Kiwis games into that. Right, right. Because surely, yeah, if he gets selected for Kiwis, that ticks off some of the clock. Otherwise, he can't play round one, but he's free to play all the Kiwis. Yeah, it's, I don't know. The, the way the suspensions have worked has, has always confused me. Like, yeah, what counts, 100%. what doesn't count. But uh, that's one way to let the team down at the end of the season. You know, that's not one thing you want to be remembered for. However, that loss should sit with a lot of those Knights players. Um, hopefully they're able to find a way to bounce back. They're a good team. They just are missing a few key pieces that can definitely get them over that hump. A couple of halves is probably what they need to sort of figure out as their halves pairing. Um, One thing I do want to say is Sky Sport, why in the pregame TAB rundown with that random like brown fella that's on there, why were they saying... Bradman best to be first, second, or third try scorer paying. It was a boosted bet paying like four bucks something. I was like, because he's not even named in the lineup, my bro. <laughs> like, who, who, who put that out there? Uh, it's pre Who okayed that from, <laughs> hey, they needed to go back and delete that recording and make a new one because the bro was not playing and then they announced that. And I'm like, cousin, have you, have you read the, the game day sheet? He's not there. When you way before that that he wasn't playing, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, hey, TAB, do better. He's better. He's better. Come up with something better this week. Um, they're probably going to say Melbourne Storm to win this week by uh, thirteen plus, and Storm aren't even playing. Uh, what did I take out of that Cowboys game? Um, look, a lot of belief. A lot of belief. <laughs> um, in themselves, in Joe Hendry, and in the coach's game plan. Um, 
I don't know how far the Cowboys are going to go. I know Sam wants to see them go all the way, but I, I just... That was two dominant performances by the Panthers and Storm. No matter how far the Cowboys get, I don't see them beating any one of those two teams. And that, that that's what I'm measuring the success of these next couple of games, you know, is... Even though the Cowboys and the Seagulls get through, the Cowboys, they play the Sharks, is it? Yeah. And then, yeah, the Seagulls will play the Roosters. See, I think the Cowboys could probably get over the Sharks. Um, The Sharks just, yeah, they haven't been much of anything, really. And as sad as it is to say, you talk about Kalen Ponga being overpaid. Someone tell me Nico Hines ain't overpaid. He's out there doing I, what? When when they gave him the contract, I couldn't believe they gave it to him off of one year. That contract, one year? Like I understand he was the Dully M, but I I've I, I had my question marks about him during that year, even though he was so good. There were games where I didn't feel like he was their best player, but he got the top points anyway. Yep. And, so that sounds like last year's. <laughs> I don't know, babe. The way you guys talk about Kalen, oh, fucking hey, sunshine man. comes He's out of this He's a great ass. player, man. He's a great <laughs> player. He's a top five player in this league, man. How? Yeah, man. No. Easily. How Easily. No. Top Maybe five. influential. Top five influential. Influential. No, He's is... number one influential. Oh, I don't know. Ooh, number one. I gotta go. I gotta put Reese up there. Number one, man. I see all the little girls come into the games because of him. <laughs> I mean, influential on the team. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about on the game. <laughs> on the product. <laughs> yeah, he's pretty influential, not going to lie. Um, I mean, look what he was able to do with this team. He sparked yeah. that offense. I don't know how many times. who Whose ankles was he breaking? It was that uh, center. Um, Viliami Valea. <laughs> I don't know, man. Earth. It's okay, bro, made not him once. Touch earth, mate. Twice. So my my whole thing was with Bradman not there. I pray they didn't go there, and then they went there immediately, and I was like, oh, well, yeah, <laughs> okay, they're gonna lose. Well, what are you? It was the left edge. That that's KP's favorite side to attack. Yeah, he's. I was just praying without side. Bradman, they just weren't gonna go to Valia because he's been horrendous all season. Yeah, well, that's his, that's his go-to side, though. Without Bradman, it's still KP's go-to side. I don't watch the Nines, man. They're boring. Clearly. They're boring. Clearly. Kalen, Clearly. overrated. Yeah, we, we, we get you don't watch many teams. Overrated. <laughs> overrated. Yeah. yeah, I don't watch your Broncos, because they Who suck. would be able to drag your sorry-ass team to the top eight? It's how good he is. I'll take Jareem Bullock yeah. any day. Bullock Bullock ain't shit. Jareem Bullock, Bullock any bad. day. Shit, bruh. Just not on anyway. all those contracts. <laughs> that's how good KP is. Anyway. No. The final score for that game was 28-16. Unfortunately, the Knights couldn't get over the Cowboys at home. And that's just the way it is. Winners win, losers lose. Mm. Sunday afternoon, Bulldogs versus Sea Eagles at a shifted venue. Supposed to be Four Pines Park, hey? Nah, after they lost that one to the Sharks. Yeah, it was a Oh, so you've always had the home. Yeah, yeah. So why didn't you just get a real home stadium? Why did you just pick that one? No, nah, of course, it is like a home stadium. Uh, Balmore is like the spiritual home ground. But of course, we play all of our big games. Although really, any Sydney team, you're playing at a core. If you're in the playoffs, it's either yeah. a core or Allianz. You don't even get an option of another stadium. So yes, That's last rough. game of this premiership gauntlet the first week, and it was my Bulldogs against the Sea Eagles. And I'd say it's the was the best game of the round. And it just wasn't to be, unfortunately. Pretty bit of uh, sweet to swallow this one. I thought we were the better team throughout. But sometimes, you know, just because you're the better team and you deserve to win it, you still have to go out and win it. And really, two mistakes in the last 10 minutes and one fucking just brilliant play from the man. Broke the Bulldogs' hearts. And they came away with a, I want to say deserving, but they got the job done. 24-22, Manly Seals are moving on, and my Bulldogs are out. I just want to say, uh, 
no, that that one kind of hurt. That one stung a little. And but I hope they can bounce back next year. You know, first time making the playoffs in eight years, and the crowd's back. You know, the Bulldogs faithful are showing out, and I think it was fifty thousand people at their game. So they have the support, but we have to take the learnings from this year. Hopefully, get better and be clinical in those moments. Because now we have to see if this was a fluke. That's the big question. Is it a fluke? Can they do it again? Based on our defense, I think we can, but it's one thing to say it. You have to go out and do it. You know, we were one of the better defensive teams throughout the year, and I think it got us to where we are, but it just wasn't wasn't meant to be. But a few key points from this game that stood out to me. One was the start. We had a much better start than when we played them two weeks ago. And one thing I liked was the subtle game change in plan from that first one. What I mean by that is we, when we played them two weeks ago, we attacked to the left, which is what we did again this time. But it was more like just hands, and it was getting Bronson Cherry on Ruben Garrick, and Ruben Garrick won that battle convincingly. What they did this week, and it kind of worked in our favor, was they had Bronson Cherry run that under route, and it was Kakao that would bounce out. So uh, Sherry would be the one that would go at either the second rower, would it be the second row? Oh, no, it would be going at Cherry. And what they left was kick out one-on-one with Garrick. Just that subtle change. And it kind of opened up that left side because kick out was absolutely dominant in that first 20 or in that first half. I mean, he wanted his payback for what Ola Kawatu did two weeks ago and he got it. Started off with a try to Kuraz and then the crowd's pumping and then that was followed up by kick out. Again, on that subtle change of that play that they made. Uh, Garrick did slip over. And then the other two defenders, they slipped over as well. So Kikau pretty much got a walk-in. We'll take those every day of the week. We had all the momentum. But what Manly is so good at, man, is you make mistakes, they punish you. You know, and they the, the first chance they got in our red zone, they took it. Uh, and they kind of exploited something that has been happening quite a bit the last three weeks and I think it's what teams have picked up on you know I think who was it the Cowboys talked about they went at Critter and playing off some of his tendencies I don't necessarily think it's Critter to me it's Sexton Sexton his defense like kind of needs to needs to catch up to par He's always like half a step behind on the plate and it puts Critter in like tough spots. Now Critter can make up for it sometimes. But then you know where you have Sexton who either goes in too early or holds too late or doesn't shift when he needs to. Forces Critter to make a play and then when you've got someone who's in and out of the team like Scouting, it's just too hard. Now Scouting, the reason why I thought you know I don't mind seeing him go is because defensively he makes bad reads sometimes he makes his reads early so he's gonna live with it this one he made a play early and it paid off you know he got the knock on from whoever it was whether it was cola or um tommy t or cola one of those two but in that second one he didn't trust uh critter so he came in and it let um tommy t get that try to start them off and then critter Big man, you know, good player comes in in big moments. And another great change that the coaching team made is that they took advantage of Turbo, knowing that he wasn't at 100%, you know, so attacking him when he wasn't in the line or when he made the tackle when we were in a red zone. He makes the tackle, give it to Turbo, who chips over to where Turbo would have been, or Burden. Yeah, and then you got Critter coming through, and he beats... uh, Tommy T, I believe, or Cola to the ball. And all of a sudden, we are up 16 to 4. Now, the first key point happened, I think it wasn't too far later. But we're in there 10. We swing the ball from left to right. Critter does the tip on. It gets the scouting. And he only has to run like far, like 10 meters. And all he has to do is beat Luke Brooks. And I think it was Cola. He ran at the uh, the corner post, and he knocked the ball on. If he scores that, all of a sudden we're twenty, well twenty to six. 
with about 10 minutes left to go in half. That's a big difference. But that ended up turning into a seven uh, tackle set. And honestly, that was one of the key points of reason why Manly won. That was a huge stop by them. It looked like the half was going to end up with nothing much happening, but DCE put a kick on and Lehi Hopawari come up with a massive play. He outjumped Connor Tracy. Now, was that a knock on? I don't know. Could have went either way. Didn't get caught. And then another one from the week that was a forward pass, not forward pass. But again, it didn't get caught. And even Bullymore comes through and absolutely whacks Skelton and scores right underneath the uh, post. And we go into halftime 16 to 12. Again, two big moments that happened and that went Manly's way. Coming into the second half now and Skelton. We open up the scoring with Skelton. Uh, again, scoring down his side. Now we're up 22 to 12. There's a bit of back and forth. And then another key point is our inability to defend scrum set plays. It happened two weeks ago when Manly scored, I'm pretty sure, off every set play they had in our half. And then it happened again with the Cowboys. Any scrum we have inside the 20 or 10, you may as well just again, let the other team score because... Man, their, their players, I don't even think are that good, but our defense just all out of whack. Again, Sexton kind of not doing his role, out of biting. For that one, I'm pretty sure he tried to play for the, what are they call the shepherding one. It didn't matter, and DCE went in untouched. Now it's anyone's game. We managed to wrestle back momentum. It looked like we were going to get there with 10 minutes left to go. Our defense was up. They get to their fifth tackle, 70th minute. And I think they're just at the 30, maybe at the 40. It goes to DC and from here, easily the try of the week. Uh, where he goes, quick inside ball to Turbo. Turbo spreads it to the left and Cola just goes on the 60 meter run that just leaves Bulldogs absolutely devastated. The dude's so quick. He was going against a retreating defense. Connor Tracy, you kind of hope would make that tackle. He had a shot. He just couldn't get it done, unfortunately. So Cola, easily the try of the week one. Hell of a, probably the best try of his career to date, or definitely the most important one. And then Ruben Garrick, a man who never looked like missing the kick, had the kick to give them the lead, and sure enough, he delivered. Stone Cold down the middle. They were up 24-22. We did have a couple of late goes at it with Burden trying to kick the two-point field goal. One of them, it looked like he wasn't even set up for, which is weird because he was in the perfect position for it. Still got it off, but I uh, was just a bit short. I think he was scared that if he hit it hard, that it would go off target. All that dude has to do is tap it, it's going to get close to it. Anyway, it was short, had one more um, chance, and it was short again. Uh, but yeah, just well, was it was a hard one. All the stats are in the Bulldogs' favour. You know, even Manly, you know, they got away with one that one, you know. All well, their players were saying that the Bulldogs were the better team, and I thought we were, but sometimes just because you deserve to win it doesn't mean you're going to win it. Two vital mistakes, you know. I thought the Scouted no try that they saved, big moment. The Lehi Hopawari assist, you know, forward pass, not forward pass, big moment. The inability to defend off the scrum, you know, big moment. There was another big moment. Where Kikau, who leads the NRL in charge downs, got one. If that ball bounces any other way, there's not a defender in sight. That's a try. Doesn't bounce his way. Goes the other way. Manly uh, retrieved the ball. So it wasn't like we didn't have moments, but all the big moments in that game just didn't go our way. And sometimes that's just how it is in league. That's how it is in life. It is what it is. You know? Um... And yeah, that's pretty much all I've got. I don't think I've got anything else. Just looking over my notes. Nah, that's that's all I've got. Bittersweet moment. Uh, hopefully the boys will be back next year and better. They can use that to motivation. Hopefully to Manly. I actually think they'll back themselves against the Roosters. I really do. And it's the same with the Cowboys too. I think both those teams will like their odds against who they're facing but hey season's over for us now uh i don't got anything more to add tough one 
congrats manly and then to the bulldogs fans hopefully we'll be back better for next year hey man congrats to team at this far we didn't even get a look in uh <laughs> our coach thought we we had a look in <laughs> but uh, i think every realist around the globe knew we didn't uh so congratulations it's been a, it's been a difficult season not just for our teams but just in general man just the amount of injuries all the teams have had to overcome mm. and just just the amount of competition the level of competition in this league it, it's been you know where the big boys should have won and they get toppled uh and the bottom feeders should be losing and for some reason they they fight like their their lives depend on it so it's been a hell of a season congrats to the bulldogs for making it this far um the five-year plan looks like it started a little bit earlier hopefully that momentum continues into the next season uh if you guys listening at home want to hear our breakdowns of the season be sure to tune in maybe next week we might start doing some um season breakdowns next week or we'll save it for the end of the season and we'll give every team a grade from f all the way up to an a plus um that bulldogs season surely yours is sitting around an a minus considering yeah. it was what between you guys and the dragons and the tigers for a wooden spoon yeah i'll after that performance on saturday at worst i was going to give us probably a b minus just because those last two weeks but after that performance you're yeah, definitely sitting around an a minus for me yeah yeah man definitely well especially considering the three teams that were um tossed up for wooden spoon only one of them come to fruition <laughs> Okay, whoa. Well, we don't, we, don't, we, don't we, don't, we don't have the least amount of talent out of every team in the comp. Mm, well, no, it's it's no, you have a Who whole has... bunch of young talent, don't you, that's coming through. Yeah, yeah what, what is it? That's uh, coming through. That's yeah, not, yeah, yeah. not in the team. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, in the chat, I've dropped the team of the week, if you guys want to go and yeah. uh, pull that up. Sam, last week you did back, say... And two, you did the forwards, or is it the other way around? I've, I've got a question about the six. The six is who it's meant to be. Oh, We've got enough disagree. cowboys in this team. We've got enough cowboys in this team. Oh, my God. Um, this week, <laughs> uh, two, you do the halves. Yeah. Uh, Sam, you're doing forwards, and I'm doing the backs. Uh, this team of the week is the practice runs team of the week brought to you by time zone uh, head over to time zone they have multiple time zones in the country you know that fun fact they don't actually have a time zone in New Plymouth um, so <laughs> this is like the most boring city in Aotearoa if you ever like want to retire and like bring your kids up yeah this is the place to do it if you want to like live a life and do things don't do it in New Plymouth um yeah time zone so time zone you um swipe your card go to time zone and play play lots of games they have time zone on um courtney place and wellington they've got time zones all over tamaki makoto they've got one in dunedin do you have one in tauranga yeah man yeah we sure do in tauranga or the mount Ah, well bayfair but well, what's that? Is it? Where, where's that? Still part is that of it. Is mm-hmm. or is it? Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, I don't know if Mount. If, I guess it's closer to the Mount side than Tauranga side, but, you know, there's still one around. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair, fair. There's, there's nothing in Taranaki, so this this is just for decoration and um, catching up with the brothers. <laughs> <laughs> So this week's team of the week brought to you by Time Zone. Head out to Time Zone, play some games, uh, use the code Sam Tirani for ten percent off your card. <laughs> <laughs> the next time. <laughs> no, nah, but hey, if we ever got see how smooth they just rolled off the tongue, if we ever got sponsored, man, we could just say be be saying like, oh, use the code blah blah blah. Anyway, prelim finals team of the week from the. Uh, Premiership Gauntlet. Starting off at fullback, and this is the last time we'll see him this year, ladies and gentlemen, it is Kaelin Ponga. On the wings, we've got Kyle Fout and Woodamu Walbrook. Uh, in the centres, we've got 
our favorite this is this is this is a show favorite we, we, we've endorsed him from like round one all the way through to the end of the season i, I can't wait to see this guy uh compete in the grand final so let's hope he he gets there uh that is jack howarth and we're gonna throw not a curveball but we're just we're just highlighting some mana wahine out there uh sam what were the stats but well, we've got isabel kelly making the team of the week making her first appearance in the uh practice runs team of the week but what was her stats brother um she set the record for the nrlw uh i think it was 350 run meters 105 close contact gee that's better than some of the men's stats yeah it's a lot better that's that's outrageous man Izzy Kelly, you are a beast. Welcome to the Practice Runs Team of the Week. Over to you, brother, for the halves. Yes, the halves for this week. At number six, we have Cameron Munster, who finally looks like he's showing that form that I predicted why he would get Dali M. A little bit too late <laughs> for my prediction, but good performance from the man. Gives him a reason why he's so great again. But at number seven, it wasn't even close. Nathan Cleary. Dominant performance, showing everyone why. Just a timely reminder of why he is who he is and why Penrith have won three in a row. Those are your halves for the team of the week. I'm stewing. I'm stewing right now. Radio In the forward pack in the front row, uh, we've got Taniela Paseca and we've got Josh King. At nine, we've got Harry Grant. Uh, on the edges, we've got Kakao and we've got Olakowatu. They both had unreal games. So to leave one of them out just because they lost didn't really sit right. Uh, and then at 13, we've got Isaiah Yo. Nice, nice. And that rounds out your practice runs team of the week, presented by Time Zone. Uh, remember, use that code Sam Tarangi for 10% off. <laughs> We're just getting fun. Anyway, let's head over to the power rankings. The power rankings are brought to you this week by 99 Dreams, I guess, because I didn't have a secondary sponsor up my sleeve and I don't want to use time zone again. So 99 Dreams, head over to 99dreams.co.nz. Check out their baseball jerseys, their baseball hats, and there's a couple of hoodies left. So if you want to support the co-papa, go and do it over there at 99dreams.co.nz. Um, and if you don't want to do that, just like, comment, subscribe, and share these with your friends and whanau. Um, All right. So we're only going to do the top eight because there, there's only eight teams left. Well, not anymore, but there were eight teams left that competed in the weekend. So at number one, we've got the Melbourne Storm. At two, we have the Penrith Panthers. At three, the North Queensland Cowboys. Four, Sydney Roosters. Five. Newcastle Knights, six, Manly Warringah Sea Eagles, seven, Canterbury Bankstown Bulldogs, and at eight, your Cronulla Luckluster Sharks. Uh, and that rounds out your uh, power rankings for the first round of the gauntlet. Ladies and gentlemen, that about wraps up the show today. It's been a great episode, a good episode. Uh, Fun, bit disjointed, but we'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> Someone doesn't want to believe in Joe Hendry. <laughs> I can't believe Cam Munson the main team of the week, let alone Joe Hendry. Oh, I'm so oh, it's because you don't believe. Let it go, mate. Let it go. Uh, I refuse. <laughs> it I refuse. Did we watch yeah. Tom Dearden? <sighs> yeah, Rap. we did. We also watched. We thought Munster Cam was Munster. better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Against the eighth Bro, range. he's showing some great form at the moment. You can't tell me he has lost a step after all the injuries he's overcome this season. He's firing, man. I can tell you, Tom Dedham was better. Mm. I picked a different. I don't know, man. Yeah, like the quality of team that Tom Dedham played versus the quality of team that uh. Hey, just Munster real, showcased pure class. Just real quick, who's ranked eighth? Yeah, that's how classy <laughs> Melbourne made. <laughs> that's how that. bad they were. <laughs> nah, man. <laughs> Melbourne Storm are just head and shoulders above the rest. 
You watch this week. If he could do it this week against the Sharks, maybe he makes the squad. But if yeah. they get bounced, I mean, there's only four, gonna clip I, this. I four teams, right? There's only four teams. Yes. Cam Munster will yeah. probably make the team again. Probably keep complaining, he will. Keep complaining, and Deirdre will never make the team. Kick out. Yeah. Hey, Garner, you're in. Kick out. Trash. Garner wasn't even in the lineup. It was going to be Katsor. (laughs) 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 What are we watching? Garner didn't even make a. Didn't even get looking. (laughs) <laughs> he wasn't even around the scene. Oh, <laughs> oh my god. But look, join us on Thursday. I'm about to wrap my part up before I hand over to Two and Sam for the final words. But ladies and gentlemen, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, your cousins, your mother, your brother, your sister, your uncle, even the weird one. Uh share it with them. Let them know that the practice run is for everyone. We don't care if they're the creepy uncle that wants to, you know, ch- choke on your pickle every now and then. <laughs> don't, don't be weird about it, man. Don't be weird. <laughs> you know those dill pickles? You get like the sour one, the vinegar one. Have you not had those giant pickles? They're disgusting. No. <laughs> Anyway, what are they dill pickles in that, eh? I'll show you them off camera. <laughs> that sounded weird. No. 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 no, let me let me pull it up first. You can get the warhead pickles. Oh. Have you not seen that? No, man. Um, dill pickle Van Hortons. You can get sour pickle, dill pickle, little pickle, big pickle. Jumbo pickle. But anyway, that's enough about pickles. It's more about the practice run. Remember, this is the practice run. The front line pass to the heart of sports action. The NRL season is winding down, but that doesn't mean the content stops. It never stops. It never sleeps. We'll have more content than ever for you guys over the summer. So sit back, relax, enjoy that while I take a break. I'm going to hand it over to Sam for a quarter or then two for the final word. Yes, sir. Yep, Nick Meany. Hard done by, brother. Thought you were in there. <laughs> but, no love for the wahine. No, 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 no. Ah, she set a record. Howarth made it. She set a record. Yeah, I'm not. I'm, I, 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 just, I just saw Kalakai abuse Howarth a few times. Didn't like it. <laughs> but other than that, uh, yeah, cheers for listening. Comment if you got anything to say. Like I said, I got time. <laughs> I'm time. I'm on. And I'll definitely make some time if you guys want to come with me for Nick Meany or for Tom Dearden. But yeah, other than that, thank you for listening. Shout out 99 Dreams for supporting. And uh, over to you too. All right, as always, we want to give a shout out to all of our fans, both near and far. We really do appreciate the support you have showed us over this year. It is coming to an end. We only have one, two, three more weeks, Fano left of the season this nrl next episode on thursday should be one of the well won't be as long considering we only have two games to go <laughs> over but hey maybe that means we've got more space for different segments we will be doing our um projected international lineups of players that are available at this moment we won't. So we don't know if everyone's going for surgery in the postseason so if we name someone and then later on they get Take it out because they're going for surgery. Well, that's on them. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, heard it here first, Fano. Another reason to, uh, to tune in to Thursday, see who we have in our team for the international season. Uh, well, I'm not actually sure. Do I have anything else to say to my Bulldogs? Just wasn't to be. Hard luck. There was a tough one to swallow. We'll be back. Uh, we'll now be joining these two boys and their teams <laughs> over in Bali so hopefully they'll get their tab rolling because we're ready to go <laughs> to the teams that are left in the comp good luck uh, honestly I hope the best team wins without injury that would be good for once because I always feel as though there's someone getting injured that just changes the course of the season but other than that I don't really have much to say we will see you when we see you everyone stay safe Cheers to the chur. Ma te wa.